Hey, welcome everybody. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And today I do have a hot stock to share with you. I seriously want you to look at this stock immediately. This is AppTech Payments Corp, ticker APCX. They are a fintech business. Fintech means financial technology. The fintech sector is exploding right now, folks. Fintech companies are popping up everywhere like dandelions in my lawn. And the problem is, is that each fintech company has its own novel, innovative breakthrough technology on how they're going to create seamless payments. Whether those payments go from us to a business, uh, getting money from the bank, sending money to a friend, whatever it is, they're trying to bring it all together so it's nice and easy and cost efficient. But the problem is they're not getting it done well. They're bringing out new technology that's never been tested. They're putting it out on the market and they're learning what the bugs and the kinks are and they're fixing it as it goes along. And the truth of the matter is, it isn't truly seamless. You see, a bank would have one type of code and platform that they're using and a business has another code and platform. And they're so different, they can't communicate to each other. So somebody has to write a piece of code, a translator, if you will, and put it in the middle. But then you got to create gateways and tunnels so that the money can move. But you want it secure, so you've got to add more code for security layers. And what you end up with is patchwork, a Frankenstein just to finalize a financial transaction. And what this company is doing, Aptech, is they are making it truly seamless. They have got patented technology where they have created a omni-channel, an all-in-one platform that encompasses everybody doing everything. Just like my body. I've got lots of different pieces, but I'm not a robot. I don't have to worry about tweaking my leg, making it tighter. Everything works synergistically and harmoniously to get the job done the easiest way possible. So looking at the description of the company, they tell us that AppTech Payments Core is developing a modular and highly scalable and secure FinTech platform that is set to fuel the future of commerce. Our platform drives business to business, business to consumer, and peer-to-peer -peer capabilities in payments as a service and banking as a service, including cryptocurrency payments and contactless payment options like text to pay, QR, mobile to mobile, and payments in the metaverse. The APCX platform powers commerce so our clients, including software as a service, e-commerce, technology, retail, financial, and consumer brand companies can deliver seamless commerce experiences to their customers when, where, and how they want to transact. You know, the best word I can use is super app. Now, they don't ever use the word for themselves, and we don't have super apps over here in this country, really, but they're huge over in China. And two of the biggest financial super apps over there right now is on WeChat and Alipay. They have got the lion's share of the digital payments over there. That's because they connect everything. I mean, think about this, folks. How many apps do you have on your phone? 20? 30? 50? And how many of those go to messaging? How many go to emails, to your music? Uh, you probably have one for your bank. You probably have one for PayPal or Venmo. Maybe a couple for your credit cards. And you probably got one for cryptocurrency. Wouldn't you like to have them all integrated into one so you didn't have to bounce around, have this one excluded, hope you could use this one? That's what this company does. Let's take a look at their website and get a closer look. We got a lot of information we could consider over here, but I want to focus in on what is most important. What sets this company apart from every other company? What sets this company ahead of every other company? This company owns patents. See, the company's been around for about 10 years and they've acquired like four companies in the last 10 years and most of them brought some patents, some technology with them that this company acquired. Now, the company hasn't actually put their patents in use yet, but their patents are being used. Fact of the matter is they have 400 forward citations. I know that sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually good. What it means is somebody is using their technology to create new technology. Their patent has been cited 400 times as being the cornerstone for new technology that is being used by companies like Apple, Google, Mitsubishi, Samsung, Visa, and hundreds of others. That's right. Their technology has already been proven to work. 
Remember what I was saying about all those other fintech companies? They're experimenting. They're coming out with their new novel breakthrough technologies, putting it on the market and tweaking it as it goes along. Their technology is already proven and they're just about ready to launch, folks. So I want to take a look at some of these patents, show you what is protected, show you what is already out there and they have the rights to. This first pack of patents they just got here recently. This newly acquired patent portfolio is focused on the delivery, purchase, or request of any products or services within a specific geolocation and time parameter provided by a consumer's mobile phone anywhere in the United States. This portfolio houses the patent that protects all advertising on a mobile phone, including in-store mobile applications. And you're going to understand why more when we look at another patent here. System and method for delivering web content to a mobile device. You're not going to believe that they own the rights to this. These patents allow companies to send URLs in a text message. They are responsible for helping to create the industry's protocol known as Wireless Access Protocol Push, also known as WAP. You've probably heard of WAP. WAP is very commonly used when you receive a text message with a link to download content or an application to your mobile phone. Every single one of us have used that technology and this is the company that owns the patent to it. Mobile to mobile payment system method. This patent was developed for moving money from cell phone to cell phone, person to person, or person to business. We believe it sparked the creation of the PTP, that is peer-to-peer -peer payments industry, by allowing users to move money by text message, click, tap, or scan. Folks, are you getting excited here yet? They own the rights to texting peer-to-peer. -peer. If you're gonna move money like that, they're the ones that own the rights to it. Anybody that's using this technology, by all legal rights, should be paying this company something. They could pursue it if they wanted to. They aren't right yet, but the fact is they own the technology. Computer to mobile, two-way chat system and method. I had no idea that they had this patent, and it's pretty bizarre considering they're mostly into financials, but the fact of the matter is WeChat is like Facebook over in China and they have connected money to Facebook so that people can move money around right in the Facebook application, if you will. This patent allows for communication from a computer to a mobile phone device using text messaging. This technology is most used in social media messenger apps or chat features. When chatting with your friends on your favorite platform, the messages are not moving from cell phone to cell phone. Rather, the messages you send through your phone are sent to the app's computer and processed and then routed to the receiver's mobile device. Now to make things easy on me and quick for you, I've jumped over here to a corporate timeline not only do they tell us what they've been doing over the last two years, but they tell us what deals they've cut over the last two years, which saves me a lot of time. I don't have to do due diligence over the last two years of news presses or go through an entire financial just to see what's going on. So they tell us it was back in 2022 when they finally got onto the NASDAQ. And right after that, they made an acquisition from Hot Hands. They acquired a geolocation patent portfolio consisting of 13 patents. And this was critical, folks. You probably didn't know this, but if you don't have your geolocation turned on your phone or your computer, chances are your payment's not going through. Honestly, they want to know where you're at before they take your money or send you money. It was also in 2022 that the company announced their patented fintech product called Commerce. This is their unified platform encapsulating all of their technology into one, let's call it a fintech super app. And this can be used with any company on any platform anywhere in the world. Do you know how valuable that makes this company's tech? In 2023, the company expanded their software as a service offering through a strategic partnership with Nuvi. Think of Nuvi as a distributor. They are going around to all these fintech companies, introducing them to app tech. Also in 2023, the company strengthened their global footprint by partnering with Coric Solutions to accelerate the Waves Enterprise blockchain mobile payment capabilities. So you're going to be able to use this on your phone and the computer to get on the web. 
but you're also going to be able to do this on Web3, the metaverse. You're going to be able to do it with your cryptocurrencies. You're going to be able to do it across border, anywhere in the world, person to person, person to business, business to bank. Look, folks, if money is going to move anywhere, this company's going to be there making it seamless. That's going to make this company really valuable. They also go on to tell us that they partnered with Broadnet Technologies to embed the APCX text to pay solution into Broadnet's easy paperless solution. <laughs> Broadnet sends out over 72 million emails around the world every single day. I don't know what's in those emails, but if they're adding text to pay in them, it has to do with money somewhere. And I'm thinking this is going to open up the door for a flood of purchases. It was also in 2023 that the company joined the Russell Microcap Index. Good for y'all. <laughs> and they also made two deals, one with Instant Cash and Pay to Me. They licensed their technology off to these fintech companies working with consumers. You've probably heard of them. They are growing fast. Now, it probably sounds pretty complicated, and it is, but let's just put it in a nutshell. The company's basically got two types of technologies, mobile payment technology and geolocation technology. And between the two, everything is possible. Everything that we're doing. Mobile payment technology allows media and applications to be downloaded to mobile devices. How common is that? We all do it. Allows bots and AI systems to maintain data integrity to make decisions. This is happening whether we know it or not. Allows for surveys, polls, customer service, and one-time password logins via a text message, making it simple. And it manages communication sessions between people or people to bots in real time. We're all doing this every single day. The geolocation technology enables mobile commerce, allowing location verification prior to transaction for security purposes. They got to know where you're at. Allows local in-store offers based on where customers are shopping in-store. Right? How can I give you an offer if I don't know where you're at? Plus, it allows for purchasing products in installments. A payment plan. How about that? It's always nice to have a payment plan. So this new platform that they've got, it is called Commerce. Introducing Commerce, AppTech's patent-backed fintech product suite, powering commerce experiences as a service. That's a new one on me. We've had banking as a service, software as a service, payments as a service. There's all kinds of AASs out there as a service. This is experiences as a service. But strange enough, their acronym is CXS. That one is going to take time to settle in. This experience as a service is designed to fundamentally change the way digital banking, mobile payments, and merchant services are facilitated. You know, ever since COVID, when we were all trapped inside and virtually the only way you got to do shopping or make payments was online, we not only discovered how practical it was, but how valuable it was. There was a lot of money moving during that period and they noticed. And that's why these fintech companies are popping up everywhere. And that's why this company is going to be so bloody successful is because each one of those fintech companies needs an integrator, an interpreter, so that their platform can work with everybody else's. And that's what they've got, an interpreter for everybody. Last piece of information I want to share with you. Commerce is being powered by the newest technologies. Our modern modular cloud-based platform is paired with our gold standard APIs and was built to integrate with a broad spectrum of technologies, including a specific focus on financial, MarTech, and Web3. So you've got an idea what they do now. They help anybody move money anywhere in any way they can digitally, whether it be on the web, on the metaverse, whether it be cash or cryptocurrency, from person to person or person to business or even business to banks. This is going to be huge, folks. We can't even see how big it is, except to say wherever money is, they're going to go. Where's money? It's everywhere. So this company could end up being ubiquitous, meaning it will be everywhere just like the iPhone. All right, so now that we know a little bit about the company, let's go take a look at the company stock. 
So we're going to get all this information over here at My Hunting Ground, the otcmarkets.com website. Honestly, folks, this is where I virtually do 100% of my due diligence outside of the charts. And it really doesn't matter if it's OTC or major exchange stock. Normally, I find what I'm looking for here. And if I don't, well, there's a whole internet out there I can go searching through. So we are looking at Aptech Payments Core, ticker APCX, finished the day at $1.58 with about 3.25% gains. And as I said, she is on the NASDAQ, which comes with benefits, right? There's no transaction fees trading these penny stocks on the major exchange, and you can trade them pre-market, after-market. Not to mention, there's a lot more volume and money up on the major exchanges. So what's the relative volume for the company today? Ooh, big drop. Wow. She isn't doing a whole lot of shares as it is. She's been doing roughly 88,000 shares for the last 30 days, but today she took a big drop down to 17,000 shares. And still, she seemed to manage to push the price up three and a quarter percent. Share structure for APCX, not bad. Outstanding share count is about 22 million. Insiders own about one third of that, seven and a half million. We get the rest, $14.5 million, which is not a bad float whatsoever. Market cap, we're at about $33.8 million. Financials for Aptech. Well, they've been growing every single year for the last four years, starting off here at just over a quarter million, 256000 We know it's that because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And at the end of 2022, they were up to $450,000, keeping $230,000. That's not looking bad. Quarterlies. We've had some ups and downs here, but we finished on a high note. The last quarter in September, they were at $140,000, and they got to keep $96,000, which is the strongest quarter we've had in a year. Looking at the balance sheet for the company. Money in the bank. They got about a quarter million dollars in there. Total assets, about two and a half million. Total liabilities, only 1.6 million. And though it's not much, we do have positive stockholder equity of $816,000. Checking out those disclosures for the company. Oh yeah, we've got some Form 4s here. Form 4s can be rather exciting if they go the right way. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management, acquire shares in the company. Now, they can do that in a lot of different ways, but we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. And you know when that's the case because of the code. Right here is a code. It is a P for a purchase and an S for a sale. And there's a lot of different letters. We're only interested in the P and the S. So this isn't a buy or a sale. What it is exactly? Well, they tell us here it is a stock award. It was granted in association with services provided to the company as a director. And that is the case with all of these Form 4s. They are all stock awards. So let's take a look at that news now. So I've gone back here to October of 2023, and they've got a variety of news here. They talk about their financials being featured in some articles, but I'm only focusing in on what I think is important. So when you do your own due diligence, you may find other pieces of news that you consider important. So back in October of last year, the company announced a $3.5 million registered direct offering. Completely different than a public offering, which is on the market and increases the float. This is a direct offering going to bigger investors, and it doesn't increase the float. Also in October, the company completes the acquisition of FinZero. They tell us here that FinZero is a software development company centered around the movement of money nationally and globally. FinZero was founded in 2018 and is dedicated to delivering innovative payment and banking technology solutions for businesses of all sizes. FinZero's API program enables AppTech to optimize integration with software providers and independent software vendors. With the assimilation of FinZio, AppTech advances into a payment facilitator position, propelling the company's aggregation model. So they're expanding what they can do. And then we've got the big piece of news right now. They talked about this a few times. We're just going to look at the most recent one right here. AppTech successfully boards its first international airport, Anto. 
its newly acquired Finzio platform for payment processing. Reno Tahoe International Airport is the first of an estimated 40 airports being boarded onto the Finzio platform during 2024, with over 400 airports anticipated to board over the coming years. Imagine that, folks. Airports. Now, the company gets paid by transactions, but they also get paid for how much money is moving in that transaction. Airports, 24-7 business with lots of money moving. The company anticipates additional airports to fully adopt a platform in the coming weeks. This just came out on the 8th, so we should probably be seeing some news presses coming out here any moment. The milestone represents the first of an estimated 40 domestic and international airports adopting our FinZero platform to manage its financial activity in 2024. So they are looking to get 400, but they've already got 40 of them lined up that have said, yes, we're going to see these coming on board one after another. This is a very good time to be looking at the company. Airports are big business and they are constantly doing business as long as there's not a pandemic. So I think now is a real good time to be taking a look at the company. Y'all ready to do some charting? Me too. Let's take a look at ticker APCX, AppTech Payments. We're going to chart this bad boy on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we are looking at a one-week, three-year chart. I had to go back this far just to see the last time I looked at this stock. It was all the way back in October of 2022. <laughs> we looked at it because of this low bubble. That was its catalyst, a 52-week low on a company that has value you can expect a bounce off of because that's nothing more than a flashing for sale sign. There's lots of people that follow 52-week lows, and the first thing they do is go check the fundamentals. And if the company has value, there it goes climbing. Well, after it hit the low of 40 cents, we came and looked at it, and it was at 62 cents. The next 45 days, she started climbing, and climbing hard and fast, hitting a high here of almost $5.40. Folks, we're looking at over an 800% run after we looked at it. She did eventually come down and she landed firmly and solid on her 200-day SMA on her three-year chart. Took another rip way up high, hitting uh, about $4.80 and then falling down into this downtrend and again landing on her 200-day SMA on her three-year chart. I can see she's arguing with it right now to stay up there. Hopefully she will. Let's come on down to our six-month, four-hour view. All right, on this chart, we have a high of $4.84 and a low of $1.14. She was going sideways here with some ups and downs, but not getting too far from the 200-day SMA. And at the end of July, something happened. She took off from about buck sixty up to $4.84. You're looking at 250% jump there, 150% gains. She then took a big fast fall into this channel and went into a downtrend. And she's been there for quite a few months, hitting a low here of $1.14 halfway through December. Now off of this low, it looked like she was trying to change her trend. She got through all of her SMAs very nicely, up here to the 200, did not touch it. She fell back underneath the 20 and the 50, came back up, Argued with the 20, lost that battle. Looks like she was arguing with the 50, lost that battle. And now she is underneath the 9, hovering over the 200 hole. Folks, we can't climb till the price is over the 9. That's our first obstacle. And what do our oscillators say about it? Well, they're not happy. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like your MACD, you read them the same. It has had a negative crossover about four days ago. Our MACD is at a negative crossover about two weeks ago, and it has been falling all of this time. Though it does show signs of coming up right now. It actually shows signs of recovery. And our RSI is very cool, <laughs> down there at 43. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that shows more hope. We got a low here of $1.20 underneath all the SMAs. Crossed all the SMAs, coming up here to 229, getting to the top of our channel, falling back down to the 200 a couple times through our channel here in the center. That is the center of our channel there, right? She's staying above the halfway point of our channel, which is real good. 
She's bouncing on the 200 here and it looked like she wanted to stay up there, fell down to the midpoint of our channel, bounced off of that and she is trying hard to get on top of that 200. But she's got this heavyweight 200 day haul, 50 day SMA and the 20 day SMA all on top of her head. So it's going to take a big bump to get her through there. We need some volume to come in. As you can see, volume was real low today. Our oscillators. Well, they're showing more hope. Our PPO looks like it's about ready to cross over that pink line and start climbing. Our MACD has had a crossover. It is currently pushing up. Oh, God. But it's still chilly in here. RSI is still down at 43. Taking a look at that five-day, five-minute chart. Oh, that isn't looking nice, is it? So we were up here at $1.67 going sideways. Made a nice attempt to get through the flat 200. She's totally flat here. She could have easily broke out. She came down. I would have thought this was a rubber ball bounce. She came up fast and furious through that 200. Then she had a smaller one and that was it. She fell away down through her 200 haul. Came up here arguing with all of it. She just can't win anything. Hitting this low of $1.50, bouncing back up, falling back down. And she hit it again. She did. She hit that same low right there, $1.50, underneath our 200 haul. At this point on this chart, things look like they're trying to turn again. Our 200 haul, our 50 day, our 20 day are all pushing up, going towards that 200, which should give us some golden crosses. That'll give extra strength to the price rising. We had a nice bar push through the 200 here, came back down, no lower than where it started, and started to climb. Another poke through the 200, falling back this time to the 20, not through it, starting to climb, and now she's arguing again. It's really difficult to tell what's going to happen here, but it looks to me like she wants to climb. Though looking at our oscillators, they are not in agreement with me. PPO, you can see, is pushing down. MACD has had a negative crossover going down. And our RSI is pushing down right now at 48. But folks, this company has got to be worth watching right now because of the most current news. They say that they have 40 airports lined up. 400 they're going to try to get, but 40 are already lined up. First one on the books. And they said this was going to start happening in the next couple of weeks. Well, that's it. We've had two weeks since that news came out. I'll bet you this week we get a piece of news. Fingers crossed. That would be enough to get this thing to start going, in my opinion. So I like APCX. I think she's got a lot going for her, not just at the airports, but everywhere. Everybody online, actual brick and mortar businesses, businesses themselves, banks. I mean, this is wide open for growth, folks. There is a lot more due diligence you're going to have to do. You know, I can't cover everything. We don't have that much time. And I probably couldn't keep your interest if we did. So please, do your own due diligence. Check out more that this company has to offer. I think you'll be excited too. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.